Hey friends, Father Allen here. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. So I want to start today a two-part series on St. Joseph. And I want to start today with the Old Testament Joseph. It's like the tale of two Josephs. So the Old Testament Joseph, and the scripture context here is the story of his life, which would be Genesis 37 to 50. And a key scripture passage is Genesis 41 verse 55. And in this passage, it's Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who says to the people, quote, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. So who was this Old Testament Joseph? Well, let me give you a synopsis of his life. You don't have to read necessarily the whole section in the book of Genesis, but basically put, it's like this. So Joseph, as a boy of 17, he aroused jealousy and suspicion among his brothers. He had the capacity to interpret dreams, and he was also considered to be his father's favorite son. And so they conspired among themselves to throw him into a well, which they did. But later on, they repented of that, and they drew him out. And instead, they sold him to a group of passing merchants, who in turn sold him to the service of a royal official in Egypt. And this official put Joseph in charge of his household. He did a very good job. Uh, Unfortunately, Joseph was seduced by this official's wife. Joseph resisted her, her temptings. And instead, she ratted on him. And so Joseph found himself falsely accused and thrown into prison. And there he meets two other officials who they were working in the palace of the king of Egypt, Pharaoh. One was a butler, one was a baker. And they asked Joseph to interpret dreams that they in turn had, which he did. And so on promise, one of the officials said he would speak to Pharaoh on Joseph's behalf. But after he was released, he failed to do this. And Joseph stayed in jail for two more years. Later on, this same same servant recommended Joseph to Pharaoh. Pharaoh calls Joseph to himself. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dreams, speaks very well, and Pharaoh puts Joseph now in charge of the whole royal household and all the royal lands and directs the efforts of a famine, which he does very well. At this point, Joseph is 30 years old. So 23 years have passed since he was sold off by his brothers to a group of merchants. And a famine comes over the whole world. And Joseph's brothers, lo and behold, come to Egypt looking for some help. And at this point, Joseph is now in charge of dishing out the help. And so Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, helps them out. He forgives them and is later reunited with his father. And Joseph puts the whole thing, all the difficulties, all the ups, all the downs, all the sideways of his life, the the setbacks, the, the betrayal, all of it. He puts the whole thing in context. And this is Genesis chapter 45, verses 7 to 8. So get your Bibles out. 45, 7 to 8. He says of his experience that he's lived, God sent me before you, he's he's speaking to his brothers here, to assure the survival of your race on earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. It was not you who sent me here by your perverse actions, but God. And the point of this is to ask ourselves a question. In the midst of all that's going on in the world, in your life and in mine right now, am I praying for the grace to understand that even in the midst of all this, God is still at work and he's actually still working to bring about a good in your life and in mine. Let us pray for that particular grace, the grace to trust in the Lord. God bless your day. Remember that we are powerless. That's when we're strong and victory is gained through surrender. St. Joseph, pray for us.